The movie starts with a guy named Jack Hunter, who used to be a secret soldier, entering a dark and noisy bar full of drunk people. Jack acts like a wild animal checking out everything around him. He carefully chooses a place to sit and stares at a young man wearing a special bracelet on his wrist. While Jack is observing, a sexy dancer comes up to him and offers him a taste of the exciting world of another dancer named Riz. She also wants to get to know him better. On the other side, the guy with the bracelet, Bobby, is already surrounded by lots of women, but he gets jealous for some reason when he sees Jack talking to the dancer. Annoyed, Bobby calls the dancer over, but she firmly says no and tells him to leave her alone. Bobby, really angry now, goes over to Jack and tells him to leave. Jack doesn't want trouble, so he tries to go, but Bobby stops him and pushes him. In self-defense, Jack makes Bobby's nose bleed. This fight gets attention, and other tough guys in the bar decide to attack Jack. But Jack is really good at fighting, so he easily beats them up. Amid all this mess, a powerful and important guy named Nichols, who is both a businessman and a crime boss, comes into the bar with his group of people. They surround Jack and make him put his hands on the bar. It turns out that Bobby is Nichols' son, which is a surprise. When Jack refuses to tell them who he is, Nichols tells one of his henchmen to knock Jack out. Jack wakes up in a police station, and Nichols himself is there to ask him questions. Jack doesn't say anything, which makes Nichols really mad. So, Nichols tells one of his guys to make Jack talk. As Nichols leaves, someone shows him a picture they found with Jack's stuff. In the room where they're questioning Jack, they put a bag over his head and try to suffocate him. Just when it seems really bad, Sheriff Kim comes in and stops them right away. The attackers leave the room and Sheriff Kim says sorry to Jack. Just as Sheriff Kim is about to let Jack go, he surprises her by taking her hostage with a gun. He tells her calmly that she'll be safe if she does what he says. Jack keeps Kim in the police station's lobby and takes a police car to escape. Meanwhile, Nichols goes back home where he lives with his sister Maggie. He goes to Bobby's room and gets really mad, asking Bobby about Jack's real identity. Bobby says he doesn't know much, but he promises that he can handle the situation. Nichols scolds Bobby for always getting them into trouble and needing his help. Later, they all sit down for dinner, and Nichols shows them a picture he got from the police station. This makes Bobby act differently hinting that he might have a secret connection to the mysterious woman in the picture. Jack stops his car on the side of the road and opens the trunk. Inside, he finds a bunch of weapons that seem like a great find. While he's looking at them, he hears Kim's voice on the radio, asking him to come back. But Jack says he needs to find out what happened to his missing daughter, the woman in the picture. Later that day, Nichols and Maggie meet with a rich landowner and a politician. They plan to make money by taking water from a big underground source under a neighborhood and making the people living there move out. They think they can make a lot of money from this water deal and go back to their fancy house. Nichols goes outside to smoke a cigarette, leaving Maggie alone. Suddenly, Jack appears with a shotgun and confronts Nichols. He wants to know where his daughter Melissa is and threatens to shoot Nichols. Just as things get intense, Bobby, Nichols' son, shows up. Jack tells them they have to talk, and Nichols has to tell him the truth. Bobby is really scared and admits that he had something to do with Melissa disappearing. He says he never meant to hurt her. It turns out that Melissa and Bobby had a complicated relationship, and she gave him the bracelet. They were at a party, and Bobby pressured her into trying dangerous drugs, which caused her to overdose. Jack gets really mad and shoots Bobby, killing him. Maggie hears the noise and shoots Jack in return. Bobby dies in Nichols' arms, and Nichols, filled with anger, tells his guys to go after Jack without stopping. Jack, who is badly hurt, manages to stumble through a forest full of palm trees. He's trying hard to stay ahead of Nichols' men, who have guns. They see him and start shooting, but Jack somehow manages to avoid getting hit. Jack is really scared, but he keeps moving and shoots back at the men to distract them. Victor, who is a trusted person working for Nichols, is leading the group chasing Jack. Jack takes a short break and takes off his heavy stuff to stop his bleeding. The group of men is getting closer, and one of them goes right by where Jack is hiding. Jack takes the chance and quickly stops that guy from being able to move, and then he surprises another guy and shoots him dead 
with a very accurate shot. At the police station, Kim tells her colleagues about Jack, but Deputy Bart Bartlett gets a call from someone named Stone. Stone tells Bartlett to go to the ranch, but says not to tell Kim. Bartlett goes to the ranch with Stone, and they hear gunshots far away. They look for Jack and find one of Stone's guys who has been shot and is dying. Bartlett gets really scared and runs away, leaving Stone alone. Stone realizes they lost Jack, so he decides to use a drone to find him. Meanwhile, Bartlett is running away from danger when Jack suddenly ambushes him with a gun. Bartlett begs for his life, saying he's a good cop and innocent. Jack wants Bartlett to tell Kim where he is but not tell anyone else. After that, Jack finds a small shed to hide in and takes care of his injuries. Back at the police station, Bartlett tells Kim what happened. The sheriffs go to the ranch and Mayor Victor talks to Nichols. He tells them to fix the problem quickly so it doesn't mess up their business plans. Kim and Bartlett are really surprised and worried when they hear about this. Bartlett thinks they should get help from nearby counties, but Kim is scared that if they involve others, Nichols might get angry with them. They decide to keep investigating on their own. Kim wants to meet Jack and find out more about his daughter, but she's worried that Jack might do something really bad because he's desperate. Nichols talks to Maggie and is worried that Jack might want revenge. Maggie tells him not to worry and promises that they will get rid of Jack and protect their business, even though their relationship is complicated. That night, Jack is alone in the shed, thinking about his past. He remembers meeting his old black ops boss, Murphy, and how he was so focused on his job that he didn't spend enough time with his daughter, Melissa. Melissa got into drugs and Jack introduced her to his friend, who was also addicted. He left Melissa, and she was really mad at him for it. Jack thinks about the time he finally reconnected with Melissa after many years apart, but she was still angry at him for not being there for most of her life. He really wishes he could have a second chance with her. The next day, Murphy comes to Nichols' big house in a helicopter. He doesn't answer Maggie's questions and goes straight to talk to Nichols. Murphy says he's the only one who can catch Jack and warns Nichols not to underestimate him. Murphy knows a lot about Nichols' security company and his powerful friends, and he says he can help catch Jack alive. But Nichols is determined to get rid of Jack. Jack finds a hut to hide in and falls asleep for a long time. When he wakes up the next day, a group of soldiers led by Stone discover him. They point their guns at Jack and attack him really violently. But even though the odds are against him, Jack somehow finds the strength to take away their weapons and stop them. He stands over Stone, who is hurt, and Jack is determined to find out the truth. Nichols hears all the chaos on the radios, and Murphy tells them again to catch Jack alive. But Maggie is really determined to kill him. Kim comes to the ranch looking for Jack. When she finally finds him, she points her gun at him. But Jack tells her that if he wanted to hurt her, he would have already done it. Jack trusts Kim because she's a good cop and asks for her help in bringing down Nichols. He thinks she knows something about his daughter, Melissa's disappearance. Jack tells Kim to look into Melissa's case, and he promises to contact her when he needs to. Then he goes back to the shed, where he has Stone tied up and covered in blood. He holds a knife to Stone's throat and demands the truth about Melissa. Stone admits that he was at the party when Melissa took too many drugs and was found in a compromising situation with Bobby. He told everyone else to leave, planning to take advantage of Melissa when she was vulnerable. Stone accidentally lets it slip that Melissa is not alive anymore, which makes Jack really angry. Jack is devastated about losing his daughter, so he stabs Stone in the neck, and Stone dies with a sad scream in the air. Murphy talks to Victor and tells him that he will do what Nichols couldn't to deal with Jack. Then he goes to the police station and meets Kim and Bartlett. He tells them quietly to keep everything secret. They look at a map of the ranch and realize that Jack doesn't want to run away. He wants to get revenge on Nichols. Suddenly, they hear Jack's voice on the radios, and Murphy tells him to give up. He warns Jack that a special team might get involved. Jack finally trusts Murphy and says he wants justice for Melissa, who was like a daughter to him. Jack wants to get rid of everyone connected to what happened to Melissa, starting with Nichols. Murphy tells Kim and her team to get ready for a big fight because Jack is coming for them. Jack sees a chance and attacks a guy and takes his truck. 
He's driving towards town with only one thing on his mind, revenge. In town, Murphy is getting ready with his men on different buildings. When it gets dark, Jack comes back to town. He hears the mercenaries talking about where they are and looking for him. Jack gets his rifle ready for a big fight. A sharp-eyed sniper sees him and takes a shot, but he misses Jack by a little, and then a big firefight starts. The mercenaries all come together in the city hall courtyard, and you can hear a lot of shooting at night. In all the chaos, Jack is really good at taking out the sniper and a few of the mercenaries, who are trained to be really good at shooting. They keep trying to get closer to Jack, but he keeps killing them. Someone throws a grenade, and it makes Jack unable to move for a bit, but then he gets up and runs away, with the others chasing him. Jack gets to a building and goes inside to hide. At the same time, Murphy tells Kim and Bartlett to find a car quickly to get away from City Hall. Two guys come close to the building where Jack is hiding. He quickly takes care of the first guy, and then fights fiercely with the second one, and in the end he wins. Kim is driving the car away from the building when Jack suddenly appears in front of them, and they have to stop. Jack gets in the car and tells them to take him to Nichols. Meanwhile, Nichols and Maggie are feeling really bad about everything. Nichols wishes he had made different choices, and thinks about his life when it used to be perfect. Maggie also feels really sorry and unhappy, and she decides to leave and go home. Nichols stands there alone for a while and then goes home. But when he gets there, Jake is waiting for him, and he has Maggie as a hostage with a gun. Jake makes Nichols give up his weapons and sit down. He wants to know the truth about what happened to his daughter, and when Nichols doesn't want to tell him, Jake starts hurting Maggie by breaking her fingers. Nichols finally admits everything. He tells Jake that he knew about Melissa's drug problem, just like his son Bobby had issues too. He says that Melissa died because she took too many drugs and overdosed. Nichols swears he didn't have anything to do with her death. Jake gets really angry and points the gun at Nichols, challenging him to shoot because he won't tell him where Melissa's body is. While they're having this intense talk, Kim and her team hear what's going on and quickly call for more police to come to the ranch and catch Nichols. Soon, police cars surround the house. Jake makes Nichols and Maggie come out of the house, and Murphy tells him to put the gun down. Jake is really sad because of what happened to his daughter, and he starts crying. Then, they shockingly reveal that Melissa didn't die at the party. She was still alive when Nichols and Bobby took her to a lake. Bobby wanted to help her, but Nichols said it was too late, and she was causing problems. They argued, and Nichols told Stone to take Bobby home. After that, Nichols dragged Melissa into the lake and held her underwater until she died. Jake kept his gun pointed at Nichols and Maggie, ready to get revenge for what happened to Melissa, but Murphy talks to him and calms him down. His team arrests Nichols and Maggie, and Jake, tired and covered in blood, watches it happen. Kim goes to Jake and tells him to hang on for help. Jake thanks her for always believing in him, and she tells him that Melissa would be proud of him for seeking justice. After a while, Jake walks away from the scene, thinking about Melissa and imagining her walking beside him and holding his hand. Later, Bartlett is taking Nichols and Maggie on a road when a black van suddenly blocks their way. Bartlett steps back quietly, and Murphy comes out with a machine gun. He kills Nichols and Maggie without mercy for what they did to Melissa. The End so the moral of the story is never mess with a dad who's good at hiding and has a thirst for revenge, or you might end up facing a surprise machine gun-wielding cop at the end of your road trip.